Now we're up to the BR6 triangle, and this is also a modified triangle. And so we refer back to the booklet, and the booklet is got the tip is just a little different. They've um, simplified it so that this is appliqued on and this is attached. So I have my pieces all laid out over here. And I have all of these numbered like they're numbered in the in the thing. I numbered these when I was doing my block prep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste these and then stitch them together and that's real straightforward and easy. These I'm going to do together in a unit. So I'm going to work on basting this. Every one of these triangles with not this one and not this one, but these triangles here. I'm going to baste this side first and the tags are going to go towards this strip. This one I'm going to baste this side first and the tags are going to go out this way. For this triangle, I'm going to baste this side first or this side, I haven't decided yet. And then this one, I'm going to do this long, long section first so that my tags go in this way. This will then end up being the same length as this. And then all of this will get attached with this lastly. And at the very end, I will applique this onto number one. So I will get started with assembly of one of my zigzag sides. I've actually started by assembling this middle section first. I figured I'd get these two on here and then I'll work on my little sawtooth section on the outside. So when I basted these, I lost which side was up and which side was down and I don't know that it matters, but I've attached this one to this side. You want to make sure that you've lined up this angle with this flat edge and the same thing up here. I did, even though it's one piece to one piece, I did sew about halfway down and then I started down here just to make sure that it was lined up correctly. When I basted this one, I had the same problem because I forgot which way was up. And so I've been trying to see if it matters and I, and I flipped it one way and then I flipped it the other to see because sometimes on these triangles when you flip it, the angle is different on either end. So I don't think it really does matter. So I'm just going to, you know, attach it the same way. I'll do it about halfway up and then I'll make sure this way to make sure that this lines up correctly because this is, this is for the edge. And then this one, of course, is for the edge of this. That'll line up on, this part will line up on this edge. So that's not true either. This part will line up here with the sawtooth edge. So you want to make sure you got that whole thing there either. So anyway, I will attach this stripe to the side and then I will get started with my sawtooth edge. So now I've got both of these little stripes attached to my center triangle. We got that all squared away. I'll set this aside and I will work or leave it in the middle, I don't know. And I will work on the sawtooth border. So I've started basting my sawtooth side and something I came upon when I was basting this. This piece is very specific. Each one of these sides of this triangle are different. So it's imperative that I know which side this is to attach to this triangle. And what I meant to do was to start this out first and then do these two sides so the tags pointed in the direction. But instead, I basted that one last because I forgot. So whatever you do, because every time you baste a triangle of this small size, you're going to cover up which way, that, which way it faces. You want to make sure that you know which side it is and then attach it immediately to the other piece. All of my long triangles here, I did, I did these, I'm going to do these sides first so that I have my tags point, pointing into this direction. The same problem you're going to have here because even though these two sides look the same, they are not the same. And these angles are a little different because there is a left hand and a right hand to these pieces. So when you go to do this, make sure you know which side is the right, the correct side and make sure that you know the left hand from the right hand. This is why for triangles especially, I baste and assemble as I go. So I'm going to get these two together and then I'm going to work my way down this little ladder.
So I'm working on putting on my border together, and one thing I'm noticing is that these little pieces, it's really easy to get them off because they, the, the lines, they line up at a point rather than at a line. And so when I stick this here, the point here has to line up with the point here. Well, the problem is that there's fabric on these points and the papers line up exactly. So the fabric that I put here, this side here has been the primary fold and this is a secondary fold. So there's a little bit more thickness on this side of this white point. And this one has a primary and a secondary fold as well. So this is a primary fold and this is a secondary fold, which makes there be an extra layer of more threads of fabric on this side. So this has got two layers of fabric in between them. And then up here you have primary fabrics. So the idea is to make a line as much as possible down this side and down this side. But at the end of the day, any discrepancies that you may have will work into the seams. So what I'm going to do here, I think that this one was put a little bit too far this way because this, this has got a little bit of an edge on it, but I'm not sure. So as I'm taping these, I'm going to tape the, my little, take a little piece of tape here and put it lined up on this edge and I'll push this down. But then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to line it up the best I can with this edge and at this point. And I think I'm going to end up with it not quite lined up on the vertical line. Yeah. Which I can work in. So this way I tape it. And if you look, you can see the point lines up well. But this is a little bit higher than this one which I can work in when I attach this so because this is going to attach to this the the white this particular background piece so I should be able to work that in but just keep aware of how you assemble these each one because there's an opportunity to get it to be a different angle and have them off and then you'll end up with a with a curved piece on your sawtooth border. So we'll see how this goes as I progress down the row. So now I've got my entire sawtooth side assembled and this is the way it was laid out. So then this goes like this because it's upside down. So it's going to be on this other side. Now because of all the pieces that are involved in here and it's going to a single piece, it's going to be longer. So if I line it up on one end, it's not going to line up exactly on the other. This is normal. A pain in the neck, but it is normal. So if I line it up here, it's longer down here. So what you do is you tape it best you can. I tape it up here, and then I tape it. I line it up here. I make it go up, and I line it up here and tape it. And then I'm going to stitch right down to about the middle of this triangle. I'm going to stitch to about here and I'm going to start here and make sure that this lines up correctly. And then as I stitch to this tie off point, when I get to an intersection and there's probably major gaps here, which is why you got to be careful about lining these up, but you're going to take a stitch from this point to this side. So let me see if I can get this line better off here. So when this is all getting assembled, this is going to be against this edge. And then you're going to take a stitch from this point and you're going to go, the, you know, as, if you're coming this way, it's the opposite. So you're going to come at one of these and you take a stitch and go this way. And it, this will pull this this way. And then the next stitch you're going to take a stitch from this corner into this way. You need a strong thread to do this and you need to make sure that you have enough fabric that when you pull it doesn't fray. So you're going to have this X and then this by pulling and taking this stitch this way it's going to take it and push it this way 
which essentially will close this gap as much as possible. This is why these gaps are why it's longer here. And this will help close it and make it lay flat. Flatter, I should say. So once you get to take the pieces out, you'll have a, a piece that looks normal. So this will get sucked up on that. So as you get to these intersections, do the little X thing. I use um, the dual duty paper piecing thread. It is able to handle me pulling on it um, because I usually snap cotton. I tried a 40 weight and I was snapping that too, but that I am aggressive. But this is the situation where it matters. So as you as I get to assemble this, then I'm going to go back and assemble this whole other side and attach it to this side. So I've attached my one sawtooth border to the side and it's worked in quite well. So now I'm going to get started on my other sawtooth border. I'm going to start up here and again keep in mind that we're going to make sure that we know which side this is going to be attached because all three sides are different. So I've assembled the other sawtooth border just like the first one. I got the little tiny ones here and I'm going to line it up and attach it to the other side of this main section. So now I've attached the other sawtooth border to the central triangle section so this whole section is ready to go. The only thing left would be to baste the point here and then attach it to this whole thing. Once that's done I can then base this and applique it onto the point. So I've basted my triangle point. I did this side first and then the two long sides. I'm going to then attach this here to the end of this triangle. This will finish the actual shape. So then I'm going to base this opposite sides and then opposite sides and staple it in place for applique. So I've attached the point of the triangle to the main section that I just finished making and I noticed that it was a little off on the angle. It was kind of like goes this way a little bit. So I lined it up to this. Sure enough it's a little, little off kilter here. So if I try to do this you can see that it's it, right here it starts to go this way. This is because there's paper in it and because I've manip you know fit this in here. What's going to happen is once it's in place it's going to be able to iron itself out, but I can't take the papers out until I put it in its spot in the border. So I'm going to have to live with this being a little off right now. If it was severely off, I'd have to take some of these apart and fix it because it's, you know, how I talk, we talked about these being a thread or two off here and there. It affects the way this angle is formed. This essentially, this piece right here essentially puts it back into place. And then when you attach this, if it's a little off, that's why. So I'm going to ease it in to once it's in the border itself. But for now, I just wanted to explain why it was a little off. And in this case, it's not huge, so I'm not going to fix it. So I'm going to base this and um, applique that onto here. So I've got my guideline in order to place my diamond. I found the center of this triangle side first and it was this is two inches so this happened to be the center of this brown part too but measure this triangle edge rather than this part because if it's off you want it to be centered on this triangle and then I just drew a line to the point which yeah it's a little curvy so it looks like it's off but it's just three-dimensional so I'm going to line up this diamond that I've basted and I'm going to line it up on with the points, these points on this line and centered between these two sections and then I'm going to staple it down. So I've placed my piece for applique and in this case the point, this point here to this point here is a little closer, this is a half an inch from this point to here and this is a little bit more of a half an inch from here to here. I liked the spacing on the sides here, but it is a little difficult to see and space it correctly when this tag is visually in the way. So I may have to, once I tuck this under, I may have to undo it and reposition it a little bit 
but um, just because I want to make sure that it's going to look right once it's tucked. But just know that this is going to cause a visual skewing when you go to place this piece. So I've gone around the diamond and applique most of this down. I've come up this edge and now my thread is right here at the point and I need to tuck this under. This is a very small point with a decent size amount of fabric to go underneath it. This is a quarter inch and I don't want to cut it down anymore because it will fray and I know this from past experience on other blocks. So what I do is I will take my stiletto and I will fold this so that it's next to this piece. So I'll fold this in. This puts a point here and it's not overlapping the paper. And then I will tuck this under a little bit at a time. And I will feather this in. And this is, this is doable because I have this stitched down with some really small stitches. So it creates like a wall so you can stuff this in there. But you want to just be gentle about it. So I sit there and I will push this in and try to maintain the integrity of this point without, it's going to round it off a little bit here, but the idea is to minimize that effect. So, and it's going to be thick. So you can see how thick it is, but we're going to work that in too. So I'm going to look on it. I'm going to look from the top down, top down. So I want to make sure most of this is underneath it. So that's pretty decent considering this is a small point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I'll pull my thread tight. Okay, so now this is where strong thread comes in handy. So I'm going to pull this tight without breaking it. And I'm going to stick this down just a little bit more. And I'm holding my thumb here because I'm making this roll up and I'm going to tuck this as I go. This is the edge of the fabric. I'm going to stick my stiletto here and I'm going to put my thread right here at the point. It's going to be underneath it. Okay, and then I'm going to go I'll travel a little bit to the edge of the fabric. And then I'm going to I'm going to pull this. I don't normally pull that through. I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to stick my applique needle. I'm going to ignore all this stuff underneath it. And I'm going to pick the edge of this paper fabric. Or the edge of the fabric that's on the paper up here. And essentially what you're going to get is this long stitch here. That's going to eventually take itself in. My needle's not strong enough to push this in. So I'm going to use my stiletto some more because I've bent needles like this really a lot. So I'm going to just sit here and work my way down this, getting a decent amount. Actually, I'm going to go back in where I came up and come back down here and grab the next edge of this fabric right there. And you can see that this is going to pull this up as you go. But you want a decent amount of fabric. You don't want to grab just a few threads. You want a decent chunk. I'm going to make sure that I don't grab the stuff that's on that tag. And make sure that's underneath. See, that's not enough threads on the top of the piece there. And so I'm going to pull some more. Now, if you can't get it very far down, it's okay. Because once you put this in the quilt... And take the papers out it's gonna be it's gonna you know nest itself in there so keep in mind right now you've got paper with a wadded up fabric underneath it on top of paper so you're gonna get rid of those two papers and the fabric is gonna nestle into the other fabric so now it's just a matter of finishing this to the edge past it a couple stitches And then I can tie off. And I can tie this off. But that's what's, that's what, how I get my points, is to stuff that tag right underneath there. 
So now my applique piece is attached. When I went to erase my mark, my point was off to the left hand side a little bit. But this is a situation where I would normally say it's not perfect, but it's done and I'm not going to worry about it. So it may be a little off, but I don't think it's going to be visible in the long run in the quilt. And if it is, oh well. So now I have a completed BR6 triangle.